Greetings everyone, Princess Etch here. Today I would like to tell a story about the first time that I ever worked at a private event. So this story is inspired by a few things. First off, I arbitrarily spent an inordinate amount of time getting ready for nothing today because, well, it's a pandemic. And I realized that my outfit today is much more kind of like professional and, um, you know, not nearly as silly as I normally wear. I don't normally wear black unless I work at private events. So after realizing that my outfit did kind of have a more formal feeling to it, I decided, well, this would be the perfect occasion to tell that story today. So here we are in my office and allow me to begin. So a private event uh, for me means working at like a wedding or some sort of like a corporate event, like a conference or a bar mitzvah, um, some sort of like private occasion that a client will hire me to attend the event so that I can draw someone's portrait on this size at a sketch. So the portrait's pretty small. It takes about five minutes to do. I knock out around 12 an hour. So that's kind of the general gist of what I mean by working private events. So I was offered this private event by my friend Brian, another etch -a sketch artist who lives on the East Coast, because he was already double booked for something else. And the gig was taking place the very weekend before I graduated from college. So it was essentially my last weekend as a student. And I was forwarded information for this company. I'll keep their name private out of respect for them, although they didn't show much respect to me. <laughs> So in this email chain, I was going back and forth with the company. We were talking about what the scope of the event was, what I would need to do, book my flight, hotel, etc. And at some point, I was accidentally forwarded a piece of correspondence from one of the people in the company to another person internally. And it basically said that, well, she's still a college student, so I bet we can get her for cheap. I bet we can get her for cheap. So I talked to some of my professors since, you know, I'm still a student after all. And we all had some really good laughs over this and it was pretty much unanimously decided that I should double what I was planning to charge. At least double, like really go out of my comfort zone on this one, just as like a lesson in humanity, you know? <laughs> so so I, uh, I went out of my comfort zone and I asked uh, way more than I was initially comfortable with asking, and they didn't even bat an eye, which goes to show that I really should have charged even more. But at least I sort of stood up for myself in a way by going out of my comfort zone and, and asking for more than I even thought I was worth at the time. So we settled on a number and I made arrangements for my flight, hotel, etc., which is something I've never had to do for myself before. At this point, I was like 20 years old, something like that. And uh, I was pretty nervous about the prospect of the gig, but I was ready for the adventure. And I figured, you know, I had a lot of experience with etch sketching and a lot of experience with life drawing. So what could possibly go wrong? So I booked the gig, I booked the flight, I booked the hotel. And uh, the morning of the flight, of course, I shot myself in the foot by booking a 7 a.m. flight on none other than Spirit Airlines. Um, by the time I got to the airport and got to the counter, it was 43 minutes before my flight was supposed to depart. And Spirit Airlines has a very strict policy where if you don't check in 45 minutes before your flight departs, then you're screwed. So they would not allow me to board the flight, no matter what. They wouldn't allow me to check in. And you have to also understand that in 2013, I did not have a smartphone. I could not check in on my phone. I actually didn't even have a smartphone until like 2015. I was a very late adopter. So cue the crying. <laughs> this is my first gig. This is my first legit job. And I managed to miss my flight. This was literally something that I had had nightmares about and it came true. It came to fruition and I was flipping out. I didn't know what to do. I called my sister's ex-boyfriend who I knew had flown a lot. And mind you, this was like 6.15 in the morning. So I called him out of the blue. I'm sobbing hysterically. And I said to him, I need you to help me get on the first flight to New York City, which is like such a crazy desperate thing to do out of the blue. Can you imagine getting a phone call like that? Like someone in deep hysterics desperately trying to get to New York City. 
So he actually helped me out. He said I had to go to a different terminal and just go to the United ticket counter and they'll help me from there. So I followed through with his advice, got off the phone, headed to United. At this point, I'm still like gross sniffling, you know, like my cheeks are all puffed up and red and I'm just having a bad time all around because I'm still in the midst of the problem and it hasn't been solved yet and I'm still not in New York City. So I had hours to get there at this point. So I go up to the United counter and I'm still sniffling and I approach the attendant and I ask her, when is your next flight to New York City? And she said, well, we fly to LaGuardia every hour on the hour. And I said, okay, great. How much is the ticket? She said $300. So I slap my credit card on the counter and I start crying all over again because I'm just so grateful. I said, thank you so much for booking me on this flight. And she goes, oh, it's okay and she hands me a tissue and I'm I'm still sniffling and I'm just a mess I'm the farthest thing that you can possibly be from professional in this moment I have lost all credibility and cool I am oh uh, well I'm learning it's my first job you know I was doing it on my own and um, I was obviously dealing with a lot of bumps in the room so I got the flight booked and I made it to the gate on time, and it was a very comfortable, relaxing flight to New York City. I remember the flight was, there were like 15 people on the plane. I can't believe that United was even flying planes with that few people, but it was a weekday. I don't know. So anyways, I get to New York City. I had already arranged for a cab to take me to my destination. The gig was in Long Island, New York, so it was a pretty long cab ride. I get to the Long Island, I get to my hotel, and I check into the hotel, and I learned at some point between getting to the hotel and when I lost that first, that first Spirit Airlines flight that here's some horrible fine print for Spirit Airlines. If you miss your first flight with Spirit, they have the right to revoke your return flight, which is ridiculous to me. But their theory is that if you missed your flight, then you're never going to get to the destination. So why would you need that ticket going back? Well, the problem was my return flight was for the following morning. It was a Monday morning. I had already planned to take the first flight back to Chicago so I could immediately take the CTA directly to school. So this was bad information for me. So I proceeded to, to spend the next few hours uh, with customer service uh, with Spirit Airlines, which is just the perfect way to spend a day. I spent an hour and a half trying to deal with them on the phone and learned that because they were able to put me on standby for a flight at like 9 p.m. that day, and that my return flight was within 24 hours, I was actually able to check into my return flight before they could take the flight away from me. So it all worked out because I happened to have had a very, very tiny amount of time that I was in New York City. So I had just enough time to put food in my belly because I hadn't eaten yet that day. So I go back down to the hotel, I talk to the concierge, and I ask her, where can I get a bite to eat? And she said, oh, there's a restaurant right across the, the street. So I sauntered off across the street, go to the restaurant, and they seat me upstairs. And the upstairs is an off-track bedding parlor. So I'm seated at a random table, I order chicken fingers, and the place looks like Mission Control at NASA, except it's a bunch of old guys smoking cigarettes, sitting in front of screens of horses racing, and it smells like lottery tickets. It's one of the weirdest places I've ever been. I will likely never be in one of those places ever again. And I got back to the hotel, and the concierge asked, oh, how was your meal? And I said, well, it was kind of weird, to be honest. It was a little strange to be sitting upstairs with a bunch of old people smoking cigarettes just by my lonesome nibbling on chicken fingers. And she was mortified. She couldn't believe that they sat me upstairs. I don't know how there was that level of miscommunication, but it just added a really nice level of mystique to today. You know, it was just a really weird day all around. So I get back uh, to my hotel and I change into my business outfit for that night and I get all my materials together and I head to the event. The event is a bar mitzvah and I wing it. I totally wing it. Like, I've never done one of these gigs before, but like I said, I'm comfortable enough with etch sketching and I'm comfortable enough with life drawing to give it a go. So I etched uh, about 40 portraits or so that night, and 
it was great. It was fun. That was honestly the best part of the night. And it helped me to realize that, my God, I can do this. I can go to events. I can draw people's portraits. I can have a great time. I can entertain. The problem was I didn't really have any assistance during the event. So it was really hard for me to advocate for things like, well, I'm done with my work for the day. Uh, you know, I clocked out. I only got paid for four hours and I had to turn people away and it was really awkward and I never had time for a bathroom break you know, the growing pains of doing a job for the first time. You just don't really fully know what you're doing. But I made a really cool friend that night who was the assistant photographer at the gig, and he kind of went to bat for me. He helped me out. He um, helped push people away after I was off the clock, which was very nice of him. And we got to chatting for a little bit. And he said, oh, okay, where are you from? Yada, yada. I said, oh, I'm just visiting from Chicago. I've actually never been to this region of the U.S. before. It's my first time here. And he said, oh, well, when are you head into Manhattan? I said, I'm not because I have a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow and I just won't have enough time, but I look forward to someday returning. And he said, no, 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 no. You got to go. You got to go tonight. You got to go to Manhattan. I said, well, I don't really have enough time. It's already like 10 at night and I've got a flight in eight hours. So I think I'm just going to head back to my hotel. And he's like, screw it. I'm going to take you to Manhattan. And I said, let's do it. <laughs> let's go to Manhattan. Let's do it. I just met you. I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but let's wing it. So uh, I, I, you know, finish up with the gig. Everything is said and done. We're good to go. And I drop off my stuff at the hotel and we're heading to Manhattan. Me and this complete stranger I met that night. And we're, we're driving to Manhattan, having a fun time. And I realized that I left my cell phone in the hotel room. So I am completely alone in a vehicle with a complete stranger in a whole new region of the U.S. that I've never been to before. It's like 11 at night and I have no cell phone. So obviously I got murdered. Um, <laughs> so we're headed to Manhattan and he takes me everywhere, man. Like it honestly feels like a rom-com. Like, he took me, he showed me uh, the Empire State Building. I got these, like, crazy photo ops with, like, piles of trash where I'm, like, holding my nose up and going, ugh. I got a photo op with a, with a New York police officer who pretended to arrest me in Times Square. I, like, he showed me Madison Square Garden. We got, a, I got a slice of Chicago, or Chicago. I got a slice of New York pizza. Um, I mean, we were just running everywhere, and I was so astounded with how awake New York City was at midnight on a Sunday, I guess Monday now, and it was a blast. It was an extremely fun time. It was the best night ever, and I'm going to leave out parts of the story just for the sake of the privacy of the person who took me to this event because I didn't ask for his permission to tell this story, but eventually he drops me off back at my hotel, and he was a true gentleman. And we, we still keep in touch. He's pretty freaking awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I go to bed at like two in the morning. I wake up at four in the morning. I have the cab that I'd already arranged for take me back to the, ho um, back to the airport. I fly from LaGuardia back to Chicago. I hop on the train and then I take the train directly to school. And I start school that day at like 10 in the morning and I'm, bleary-eyed and delirious and I feel like I just went on this extremely insane whirlwind adventure and I I eventually left school that day in like the middle of the day so I could just crash because I was so tired but that is in essence the story of the first time I ever did a job uh where I where I had to travel on my own and it is one of the coolest memories I have. It was such a fun night. I'm going to share some pictures like here. I'm going to move to one side of the camera here. Which which way should I go? I'll go this way. Here we go. So I'll share some photos right over here showcasing some of the photos that my new friend took um, because he was the assistant photographer at the gig. He had this killer camera and um, it was such a fun night and I feel like I was in a movie. It was a blast. Um, and I have since had a lot of really fun adventures as an Etch-a-Sketch artist, but that day I truly felt like I was the main character in a movie. <laughs> it was such an incredible night. It was just everything about it. Like, 
it started like the worst it possibly could have started and it ended on the highest note that it possibly could have. So I'm just so grateful that my life as an etch sketch artist has been truly charmed. I, I've just had this crazy awesome life and I hope that you derived enjoyment out of me telling the story of the first time I ever had a gig. Um, and um, I look forward to telling more stories in the future. Apologies again for the audio probably being bad, um, but um, hopefully I'll rectify that in the future. Until the next story time, peace out.